We're in a series, The Holy Experiment of Us, and uh, I've been thankful for those who've been speaking in the early part of the summer, and you're now stuck with me. But uh, today we come to the Lord's table, and in one word, the title is Until. Let's pray. Our Father God, you know what exactly is needed by everyone here and everyone listening online or by radio. I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will minister to each and every one, that you will highlight for them things that will help them in whatever they're facing. And I ask Jesus, will Holy Spirit lift Jesus high through me and the rest of this service as you have to begin with, so that we will see him in this table is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. Reading this morning from the New King James Version. And by the way, it's nice to give you a cool welcome today. You faithful ones, the others are still in fear and trepidation. Let the word go out. We have air conditioning. Amen. It wasn't easy, but praise God, we have air conditioning. Have you ever noticed, well, look at here at the, as Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And that's good news. Have you ever noticed that it's not always the fancy gifts that are the most meaningful to you? Have you learned that it's who gives them, why they give them, where they give them sometimes that makes the priceless difference? I was given such a gift back when I was four or five years old by my little friend, Jeffrey. My mom babysat Jeffrey, which was great because he and I were best friends, and that meant we were together from Monday through Friday all day long. We did all of the important things together, like build forts, catch frogs, release frogs as well, children, explore the edge of the woods, we even suffered through nap time together. Suffering can bring kids close. We were close. And what you see on the screen was Jeffrey's stuffed animal. This was his little stuffed elephant. It was the most important toy in his life, this little elephant. Uh, you may think that it looks this way because of how many years have passed, but actually, this is what it looked like when I was around five years old as well. Elephant and Jeffrey, they were inseparable. And, and he had him everywhere we went, he carried this elephant. And I guess he took him home and he held him all evening and this little elephant slept in his bed. This was, um, if you know of Charlie Brown, this elephant to Jeffrey was like Linus's towel or blanket, everywhere together. Something happened that Jeffrey and I were both sad about. My dad, pastor, we were gonna move to another district and so we had to say goodbye. And I remember that last Friday that he stayed with us when his mom came from work. We were trying to be brave and strong and we were fighting back tears 
We're about the same age, but I was taller than Jeffrey. Some things never changed over the years. He came up and he hugged me, and then he handed his priceless elephant to me. I, I didn't know what to make of it, and so I just tried to hand it back, and he kept pushing the elephant back, which was so unlike Jeffrey. And I, I tried multiple times to give it to him, and he said to me, I want you to have my elephant. I miss you, Ronnie. I want you to have my elephant. I guess he was already missing me, and I was already missing him. And his mom had to actually reassure me and say, little Ronnie, that was me back then, Little Ronnie, he wants you to have this elephant. He wants you to have his elephant. She said it was for me to remember him by. And I have now for more years than I'm going to share so you won't be able to do the math. I have had this elephant a long, long time. And it has made it through many a move. The gift doesn't have to be fancy to be special. I began to learn that as a kid. A gift doesn't even have to be, well, look beautiful to be beautiful. This table is a gift. And Jesus is a so much better friend and Lord, and he's a much better friend than I was to Jeffrey, I hadn't even thought about it. I admit, my little mind was, what can I give him? It was too late. I was the one leaving and he was giving me, but here Jesus is leaving and he is giving them these emblems to remember him by. If you have read scripture prayerfully many times, and I hope that you have, you know that what I say is true that the same passage of scripture can sometimes speak to you differently. It's not a message of contradiction. It's one of addition and sometimes even multiplication. It's not that God's word changes. God's word doesn't change. Aren't you glad? It's that our needs are different. And God's divinely inspired word is so rich, so deep, so alive, so big, that we find that it is a word to us wherever we are and whatever we're going through, whatever circumstances we are facing. I believe that that's why going through the scripture that I read to you today, two words especially struck home to my heart the word desire and the word until. It hasn't been an easy time in our world and often sometimes maybe in our families it hasn't been an easy time for our church family with things that have come its way. And the Holy Spirit has almost highlighted, it feels like, these words out of this passage, desire, until Jesus is trying to prepare his closest disciples. He, he's been warning them for a while, they're not ready. And the words feel like to me that they just went over them without sinking in. I believe though they sank in later and that they learned how to hold on to these words. No matter what he's told them in the upper room, they have denied it. And they, they deny that they're gonna be scared and scattered before long but it's going to happen. The words in this passage though, are for me like the great musician God playing, and I think it's because of all this beautiful music, that the verses in God's word are so rich and so full of the Holy Spirit that all the Holy Spirit has to do is strike the chords in just a certain way to allow parts of verses of the great composer to be highlighted with certain notes and to resonate exactly to what our souls need. So today, I don't know about you, but what my soul needs to know is of Jesus' desire for me, his desire for you, 
And in a world so crazy with hatred and war and assassination attempts and, and the vitriol, the word until is absolutely priceless to me. And he has spoken to a heart that needs it. While hanging around the upper room, I find Jesus wanting to them to know that while he is about to die, his love is undying. He wants to give them gifts to remember him by. And not only does he want to give them the gift of the bread and the wine, he is going to make a promise to them. It's important for me to be reminded how much Jesus longs to be with us and to have this meal. Sometimes it can feel in the hurt and in the craziness of this world that it's short taking him a long time. Why doesn't he come? Doesn't he care? It is good to remember, Christian, that he loves us more than we love him. And he desires to have this meal with us again even more than we desire to have it with him. First gift today. The second is the promise. I was blessed to spend, not this week, but last week with family. And at this stage, grandchildren are the closest you get to heaven. There are times that it's not, but overall, <laughs> it's close to heaven. But maybe you've experienced this. That you gather as a family and it fills your heart but there are seats around the table that are empty. And you miss them so. Jesus makes promises to the disciples at this table. He's saying that this goodbye is not final. He wants them that if you take this gift, This is not the Last Supper. If you take this gift, there is no Last Supper. The Jesus farewell banquet, the one who should be glorified as the one doing all the work. I ask myself, what is he doing here? And I find myself so thankful for God's patience in his love. As he's at the table with his disciples, things are happening. He is fulfilling a lot of prophecies. He is the dream come true for all the Old Testament dreaming visionary prophets. He is not only a vision, but he is the substance of their vision. And he presides over this, his table. The Passover celebration is being led by Passover himself. Type is not only meeting antitype, antitype is holding type in his hands. And what better hands could they be held in? Substance is in the upper room holding and handling the symbols of himself and his sacrifice, symbols both past and present. He holds the future, is what it said, in his hands. And we can hold on to that in these times. Jesus holds the future in his hands. And there is no one safer to hold them. Jesus, I realize, he's packing. He's going to be leaving soon. The amazing thing is God who became man has very little to pack because he has given it all for us. He's going to be leaving, and he says with desire, I have desired. With fervent desire, I have desired. In the upper room, Jesus is not stuttering. He is emphasizing just how much he wanted to be with them. 
And I ask you today that if he wanted to be with them in that measly upper room just before his death, how much more does he fervently desire to be with us again at the table in person? What's this? Well, while it is a lot of things, one thing for sure it is, it's a lot of desire on the part of the desire of ages. And it is here that Jesus gives his disciples farewell gifts to remember him by, sacred symbols of his love. And while he is giving them gifts, he gives them a promise more than once. Until. Until. He wants them to know that this may be the Lord's Supper, but it isn't the last, not for those who take the gift. The supper before his death, but not the last supper if you receive his gift. He is the resurrection and the life, and he has made promises. Did you hear it? Until. Maybe the untils in Luke and in Matthew are, are too subtle to really let them jump out at us. So maybe let's let the Apostle John shine light because he writes so much more about what happens at the table. I mean, Jesus says in John 14, one to three, let not your hearts be troubled. This is about until. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It's a promise. Until. And that is hope. And that is assurance in a world gone mad. And that is hope and confidence in a nation gone mad. What is Jesus saying at the table? The message of the table is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Take this bread. It's my body broken for you. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, the gift of God. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And there is power in his blood. The Lord's Supper is about many things but maybe it's mostly about Jesus giving us gifts to remember him by and a promise to hold on to no matter what we face. And the promise is until. And he who promised will fulfill it. For he doesn't only speak the truth, he is. He will fulfill it. For Jesus is coming. He's promised someday that we'll never say goodbye again. Now let's hold on to the promise that holds us.